There's not a whole lot of stuff in nature that scares me. I mean, I've hiked over 50 miles through the Alaskan wilderness, bear country, wolves, moose. I grew up on a farm. I've been out in the woods, you know, dealing with animals, wild animals and stuff my whole life. And, and I'm just used to that kind of stuff. So when it comes to nature and the things in nature that are kind of out to get us, there's not a whole lot that really freaks me out or scares me. But there is one thing, and it's probably my number one fear, and that is ticks. So it's kind of a weird fear to have, and it probably doesn't make sense to a lot of people, but let me explain this, all right? So if you've been on my channel, you probably realize by now that I've been carnivore for five years, and my dog has been carnivore for five years as well. So my dog and I eat a significant amount of meat. And over the last few years, specifically I'd say like the last five years, there's been a disease that's been popping up and becoming more and more prevalent across the United States, and that is called alpha-gal syndrome. And it's a tick-borne illness, all right? So I'm going to try my very best to stay away from the conspiracies about this, this disease and, and try not to get in the conspiracy realm because I have a lot of opinions on why this stuff's happening. But the why is not really important when it comes to this topic because this disease affects people that eat red meat and, and only people that eat red meat. Now, it's not transferable to dogs as of now. I don't know if that will change, but as of now, there's, there's never been a reported case of a dog catching this. But it is very transferable to humans, and it's from the Lone Star Tick, the same tick that carries Lyme disease. And we'll get into Lyme disease in a minute, too. But this disease, as far as I know, has never existed up until the last, you know, five or ten years. And now it's becoming extremely prevalent. So starting in July of last year, 2023, there was a string of articles that came out right around the end of July. And every single one of these articles was highlighting the fact that there were more cases of alpha-gal reported in the United States than ever before in recorded history. And as of, as of that date, as of July of 2023, there were 450,000 cases of alpha-gal syndrome across the United States. And it's primarily concentrated in Central America, specifically the Southeast. So states like Kentucky, Tennessee, Missouri, you know, that central area seems to be where it's the most centrally located. But it's all over the United States. I mean, it really is. It's from north to south, east to west. I don't know if there's a single state that has not had a reported case of this stuff. And essentially what it is is, you know, you get bit by this Lone Star Tick, and I guess you have a 50-50 chance now on whether or not you're gonna get Lyme or you're gonna get Alpha-Gal, but if you get bit and you get Alpha-Gal, it makes you allergic to red meat. And to me, that is the most terrifying thing in the world because when I got sick, I mean, it basically limited me to only being able to consume red meat. That was the only thing that did not negatively impact my health. It was the only thing that healed me and cured me. And now that I've recovered from that, and I'm five years into carnivore, I can eat other things, but there are certain things that I still don't tolerate well because my health was in such a bad state when I started this journey. So I guess you could say I've never actually fully recovered from that. Or maybe I've just found a way of eating that completely optimizes my health so when I consume other things, I can tell right away if it's going to negatively impact my health or not. But either way, I feel my very best and I function my very best and I'm in the best health of my life eating meat, specifically red meat, and I eat copious amounts of it. I eat roughly one cow a year, which is around 1,000 pounds of meat. Now, it sounds like a lot, but considering I'm only killing and consuming one animal, it's actually not that much food if you really think about it that way because either way, you're probably going to consume about that amount of food. But people that eat varied diets, I mean, you're consuming multiple animals every single year. And I actually happen to hunt and I source a lot of the food myself. So I'm actually probably killing fewer animals than most people in the United States on average. But with all that aside, red meat has 100% transformed my life. It is It has allowed me to heal and it is brought me to the absolute apex of health. I'm the healthiest I've ever been. And I know it's it's the same for a lot of people. A lot of people that have been on this carnivore journey and have discovered the healing power of meat, they're all a testament to this. I mean, everybody has a story to tell about how meat has changed their lives and has pr transformed their lives and improved their lives for the better. And now this tick-borne illness seems to be spreading across the United States and is making people allergic to red meat. Now, I'm not saying that if you go hiking out in the woods, you're going you're gonna to get a tick-borne illness and you're going to automatically become allergic to red meat. Not all ticks carry this stuff. But the fact that it's out there and it's proliferating and this disease never existed 
throughout history because if it had, I mean, imagine the detriment it would have caused on native populations. This area was once teeming with, with Native Americans. And to think that if they had this disease back then, when they were consuming basically bison and mostly red meat, I don't think they would have survived. And I don't think they would have thrived as a civilization. So I really want to bring awareness to this topic because I don't know if there's a lot of people out there that know this disease exists. So I really want to bring awareness to this and just make sure everybody's aware. I'm recording this video in April and the summer months are just right around the corner. And a lot of people are going to be going outside. They're going to be spending time outside with their dogs. They're going to be hiking through the woods and, and just enjoying nature, which is an amazing thing. Being out in nature is one of the best things you can do to improve your overall mood, your health, your well-being. And being outside with your dog, it's just really soothing. And it, it just kind of puts you in a good mood. But being outside with your dog, and especially if your dog lives indoors with you, it really opens you up to increasing your odds of catching this this disease. And I personally know three or four people in my social circle who have been diagnosed with alpha-gal. And again, this has never existed as far as I know. I, I never heard of people getting this disease until like the last five or 10 years. So we can all speculate why that's happening. I mean, I know there's there's anti-meat agendas and, and there's a huge push to get rid of cows and, you know, the whole climate change thing. Red meat's been demonized and, and they're trying to get people really on a plant-based diet. That's why they're coming out with a lot of these meat alternatives and things like that. So we can speculate. And again, I'm, I'm really trying to stay away from those topics because I'm just trying to focus on the facts and how detrimental this could be to our health if, if this continues to proliferate and continues to grow and expand across the U.S. It's really a terrifying thing, especially for people who have been on the bad side of health and who have come out clean on the other side and have done that through eating meat. It, it's a really scary thing. So between 2023 and 2024, there's been an increase of all these tick-borne illnesses. And, and I've been seeing more and more of this stuff pop up in my feed. So again, I just talked about alpha-gal. So the other one is Lyme disease. I personally know quite a few people that have had Lyme disease, that have Lyme disease, and it can absolutely wreck your health. I mean, it is very, very bad. It's a disease that you simply do not want to get. And again, it comes from the Lone Star Tick. Now, when it comes to alpha-gal, like I said, it's not transferable to dogs, but Lyme disease is. It has been recorded in people and dogs. So when you go out and you're hiking through the woods and you're playing with your pet outside, there's a chance that you or your pet could get Lyme disease. Which, which again can just absolutely destroy your health and it can be really hard to recover from, even on carnivore. And you know, Lyme disease, I think has pretty much been proven at this point to have been man-made. I mean, they talk about how it was made on Plum Island and the tick somehow made its way to the United States mainland. And you know, it's kind of grown from there and proliferated and now it's, it's a very, very common illness. So between 2022 and 2024, there has been a 70% increase in reported cases of Lyme disease. And again, you can speculate on why that's happening. It's really hard to say. And if you look at a lot of the articles, they kind of point to the fact that it's, you know, they've increased the reporting and things like that. But I don't know. I don't know what the actual cause is. But regardless of that, the fact remains that it is increasing. I mean, there, there's an increased prevalence of these diseases and we're all susceptible to it. It doesn't matter if you live in the country, if you live in the city, especially if you have a pet, you're going to be susceptible to contracting these illnesses. So on top of all that, as, as if all that's not bad enough, there's also an increased prevalence of cattle ticks. Now, cattle ticks is kind of a different topic because they don't really target people and they don't really target dogs. As a matter of fact, I was reading a lot of articles we're talking about they prefer bovine. They prefer cows. They don't really attach themselves to dogs and humans that much. Like, I guess they will if they're, if they're really hungry, but they mainly target cows. And these cattle ticks have just proliferated across the United States. I mean, they've really taken over. Now, throughout this entire winter, I've been dealing with ticks. Almost every single time I go out, I've been dealing with ticks. And I live in the southeast. Like, it does get cold here, but it doesn't get super, super cold in the winter. But we've had plenty of snow this year. We've had, you know, sub-zero temperatures. And it's gotten cold. But throughout that whole period, when my dog and I go hiking through the woods, there's ticks coming off of us. And that's kind of a scary thing, but even scarier than that is that most of these ticks that I'm seeing now are cattle ticks. And I've never had cattle ticks on my property. I've been on this property since 2006, and I've never had cattle ticks out here that I've noticed up until this year. And when it comes to cattle ticks, Bill Gates, which I don't trust anything Bill Gates has his hands on. I got a lot of reasons for that, and I might go into that one day in a video. 
but I just don't trust this man. So he is now funding a biotech company to genetically modify and genetically engineer these cattle ticks because these ticks are starting to spread yet another new disease that this time affects the cattle populations and apparently it's pretty detrimental to cattle and it's called thylaria. So this, this disease, thylaria, apparently it's another tick-borne illness and these cattle ticks carry it and as these ticks get on these cows, they spread this disease and it's apparently devastating the cattle industry. So again, all these diseases, all these, these new diseases that are popping up for some reason, again, we can speculate why, but for some reason, they seem to be targeting beef. They seem to be targeting cattle populations and, and people that consume beef. And I'm going to put links in the description below to all this stuff, to every single one of these articles I'm talking about. So y'all can go on there and you can read through these. You can form your own conclusions. But I just want to make sure everybody's aware of this. Because again, as the summer months come up and you're, you're spending time outside and you're playing with your dog outside and you're spending time in nature, I want to make sure everybody's taking the proper steps to mitigate the risk of contracting these illnesses, to coming in contact with these ticks. And that's another reason why I'm making this video is because I've been researching over the last six months or so trying to figure out what the natural alternatives to bug spray is. What are the things that I can use on myself and on my dog that's going to mitigate our risk of, of getting ticks on us? Because the last thing I want and the last thing I need is to become allergic to red meat. That would be catastrophic for my health. And I know there's a lot of people out there that are probably in the same boat as me. You know, meat saved them, meat saved their life. And if you had to go back to eating processed stuff, and especially all this processed crap they're coming out with now, it, it would destroy our health. I mean, it really would. I would probably be back on the brink of death within a year's time. So again, I want to put this out there just to make sure everybody's aware, but I'm also looking for natural alternatives. So when it comes to natural alternatives, I found it kind of difficult to find natural things like herbs and oils that are safe for both humans and dogs. So I kind of like to just poll the community and see what you all have come up with. Do you have any natural alternatives to bug spray or flea and tick protection? Are there things that you've used on yourself and on your dog in the past that have worked well for you both? So the things that I've found so far are lavender, cedar, peppermint, eucalyptus, lemon, and clary sage. Now I've used peppermint on my dog in the past with some pretty decent success. But some of the other ones I haven't tried yet. So what I'd like to do is if you would leave your comment in the description below. And I'm going to go through and I'm going to compile everyone's suggestions. And over the course of this summer, I'm going to try out some of these things. And I'm going to document it. And then I'm going to post it on this channel. And hopefully by the end of the summer, I'll have a pretty decent list of the things that worked for us and the things that didn't. And I think this is a really good way for everyone to just share their experience. Because again, it can be kind of hard to find natural alternatives to a lot of the stuff that's on the, on the market right now. So essentially what we'll be doing with this comment section is just making a, I guess you'd say like a giant recipe book for the things that you've created and the things that you found that work for you and your dog for repelling ticks. So the three things that I have in my arsenal right now that I'm gonna try at the start of this summer is pennyroyal oil, and that's a heck of a tongue twister by the way. Now I'm gonna use that one on myself but not my dog because it can actually be very toxic for dogs. It shouldn't even come in contact with their skin. So I'm just gonna use that on my clothing and see how it works for me. The other ones are peppermint, eucalyptus, and lavender. So I'm gonna give all those a shot at the start of this summer and just see how I get on with those. And again, I'm gonna document everything and I'm gonna put it all on this channel and share my experience. Now, from what I've researched, the essential oils that you should absolutely avoid 100% that should never come in contact with your dog are pennyroyal oil, cloves, and wintergreen because they can be very harmful and very toxic to your dog. So I say all this not to fear monger, but just to make sure everybody's aware that this stuff is out there and it is very real and it's becoming more and more prevalent. So again, if you have natural alternatives to bug sprays and and flea and tick repellents that you've used in the past, please leave those in the comments below. I'm gonna compile all that stuff. It'll be a great resource for everybody to go down and read these comments and they can see what worked for you and they can try things for themselves. And again, I'm gonna document what I tried this year. I'm gonna make a series of videos around these topics and I'm gonna put it on this channel. And I truly hope it helps somebody out. So if you're looking forward to seeing what everybody comes up with and you wanna follow along as I try these things out throughout the rest of the year, feel free to like, subscribe, join the Apex Tribe, and let's see if we can come up with a solution because through this community, I really think we can.